All right, man, peace. So now another one of the big acquisitions that was made by an NBA Western Conference team was by the Houston Rockets. They recently executed a very, very large sign and trade to acquire NBA superstar point guard and future Hall of Famer Chris Paul. Now they had a sit down with James Harden before this this uh, previous season. They also had a sit down with Chris Paul during this during the season that uh, just passed. We're going to get some insight into both of their character. After that, we're going to see what the feasibility is of, of uh, them meshing as a backcourt. That's because James Harden, along with coach Mike D'Antoni, performed an extreme makeover of the Rockets. They turned into one of the most explosive teams in the league. I spoke to Harden just at the beginning of that experiment, and he talked so candidly about repairing his image after being left off all three All-NBA teams the previous season. You had a great quote about team chemistry. You said, to build something I haven't had since I've been here, everyone on the same page, everyone in the same boat. Why do you think you haven't had everyone in the same boat in the past seasons? Uh -huh. Because you, um, you're selfish, you're lazy, you don't come in condition to play both sides of the basketball. Attitude reflects leadership. going back to last year because it was so, so frustrating you know for for myself and then for our organization so we don't want that to repeat and um you know this is this is i gotta do things that i haven't done as a leader and yeah you things you haven't done like work out and get in shape condition wise so that you can play both ends of the floor uh hopefully you decide to um to choose a position and play the two guard and let chris paul run the offense and hopefully chris paul doesn't decide that he wants to go Kobe Bryant and go nuclear whenever things don't go his way. But we'll see what happens. I'll go out and get out of my character zone a little bit. And, um, and I'm willing to. I'm willing to sacrifice uh, for the sake of the team, for the sake of whoever, um, you know, for us to be successful. All right, so let's talk about that. You said you looked in the mirror. You didn't like everything that you saw. What didn't you like? You know, my performance uh, consistently, you know, was, uh, you know, whether it's offensively, whether it's defensively. His defense has been embarrassing. If you're going to take a knock. Look at that shit. Nigga look like a damn traffic cone. I mean, there were multiple, multiple times that it would just look like someone was walking by you. What was happening there? Just, just not focused. <laughs> not focused and, um... You know, a lot of distractions, um, you know, but well, once again, I had a lot on my plate. Yeah, I know you had a lot of distractions. Uh, Oscar Lomenfame, you were one of Khloe Kardashian's previous victims with your dumb ass. She probably got rid of you because she didn't like how that big ass beard felt on her damn anus when you had your head all up in there. Which I don't think anybody else in the NBA has on their plate as far as minutes being played, the load. Just all that. So. Don't bitch and complain about the minutes. You're the guy who said that you want to play every minute of every game. That means you have to come in to the season in immaculate condition, which you very rarely ever do. All right, why do I say that? When a guy doesn't play defense, that's conditioning, brothers. That's all that is. The top two-way players in the league, when you say somebody's a top two-way player, what that means is that he's in top condition. Kawhi Leonard is one of the most conditioned players in the NBA. All right, so is LeBron, even though LeBron doesn't play the defense that he used to play. So is Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson's conditioning is immaculate. All right, Steph Curry's conditioning is immaculate also. He doesn't, he doesn't play great defense, but he tries hard on defense. You never see Steph, like, you know, you, you never see Steph just uh, look like a damn traffic cone like uh, James Harden. All right, Steph will get jerked, but at least, he'll, at least he's trying to play defense. This guy here, he's just not in shape. You can see him walking around. The man got a pot belly under his damn jersey. That goes from the factor, which is no excuse. But hey, I look in the mirror. You got to be better, and um, and you got to come back uh, uh, more focused. You're gonna have even more on your plate maybe this season because this is your team. You yeah. signed that contract extension. Yeah. Dwight is gone. How do you want to manage things differently so you don't get yourself in that situation again? Yeah, just from top to bottom, we have something different. You know players and the coaches holding each other accountable uh listening learning teaching so something we kind of lacked the last few years and, and 
Uh, I'm excited about this journey. Dwight, when man just took a shot at Kevin McHale. He took a shot at all his previous teammates. He said, listening, learning, teaching. So he's basically saying Kevin McHale didn't know shit. Laughed, was very open about things. He talked about the communication between you guys. Dwight said it wasn't as good as it needed to be to succeed. Do you agree with that? I agree. That? What do you think? Pretty accurate. Um, I mean, I don't know if it was communication. It was just, uh, it, didn't, it didn't work. You know, it didn't work. And yeah, it didn't work. He had two idiots on the same team. Uh, James Harden and Dwight Howard. No disrespect to either one of those brothers, but you know. Both of those guys make terrible decisions. Dwight has about eight kids with eight different women, and James Harden is running around dating Khloe Kardashian and comes up small in the playoff. These are just facts. So, you know, neither one of these guys are too swift. You know, you can't have two idiots as your leaders on a team. It's not going to work. Um, no pointing the fingers, no, no, none of that. It, was, it just didn't work. And in life, sometimes things just don't work out. You guys haven't played a game yet, and yet it seems like team chemistry is already better. You know, it kind of takes me back to, a, you know, as a young guy in Oklahoma City, I mean, we hung out off the court, and that carried or translated to on the court. You know, we were that much better. We, we knew each other, you know, and so that makes a team. That's true, but at the same time, you guys were fresh out of college. Uh, you were more willing to assimilate. Your egos hadn't fully developed yet, where you were trying to, you know, you were trying to etch out your own legacy in the NBA quite yet. You didn't quite realize how good you could be. Then you all had that moment where you wanted to depart and go somewhere else and create your own legacy, create your, you know, your future. So, it's totally different. It's kind of hard for you to compare what you're trying to establish in Houston with what you had in OKC. It's like trying to compare your high school days to um, to your adult life. Not bad from Harden. And after averaging 29 points and 11 assists in his first full season running point, he then, of course, took it upon himself to recruit Chris Paul to Houston. So next season, you're going to have two players who finished in the top four in assists per game sharing a backcourt. Must see TV, indeed. Yeah, but there's different type of assist players. Both those guys are ball dominators. So that's why I personally don't think it's going to work. Uh, then both of them are known for being very immature and very selfish. So we'll see. Now, before we go to break, I want to show you a great piece our friends at NBA Countdown put together. This featured the third place finisher to the league's MVP, Stoic Kawhi Leonard. Enjoy. <laughs> I don't get Kawhi to laugh. Hey, I guess as good as mine. I don't know I did. <laughs> you cannot get Kawhi to laugh. Having Kawhi laugh is very hard. A job that I haven't mastered yet. Uh, I gotta work on my game. Sometimes you can't make somebody laugh because you're just not funny. Maybe you're lame. No, when you try to be funny, a lot of times you're not funny. It has to come natural. Kawhi Leonard looks like a dude who's focused. He's, you know, he's also... <laughs> You know, he's also under that hypnosis from uh, Greg Popovich. Look, I said not to digress, but I told you guys, these top coaches, the vast majority of them are, are uh, MK handlers. They have, you know, they've been trained on how to manipulate a lot of the monarch athletes. Is Kawhi Leonard a monarch athlete? I don't know. I, I have to go into um, his background. I believe that, uh, what college did he go to? San Diego State? I have to study his background. I know that San Diego has a naval base adjacent. I don't know if he's from San Diego or not. But Greg Popovich, and I, uh, I mentioned before that I believe that he's a, a, a MK handler. And then come to find out, just doing some research on him recently, he has a, a psychiatric background. He, uh, he, uh, attempt, he allegedly attempted to join the CIA and went to spy school. He was in the U.S. Uh, military. And uh, as I stated, supposedly, he wanted to learn espionage and mind control techniques and did try to join the CIA and go to spy school. You know, these, <laughs> these are just things, brother. Y'all going y'all gonna to learn. You're going you're gonna to figure some of this stuff out. There's a reason why all the top players that play for San Antonio have that real stoic demeanor. All right. That's how he likes them. Easier to, um, to trigger, easier to manipulate. TV shows, funny movies, jokes, just like normal people. Here and there you can see a, a smirk. I guess I'll laugh and smile all day. 
He's actually a personal guy. He laughs all the time. Talk about music and women. <laughs> Why Linda look like <laughs> look like he could be a damn serial killer. But anyway, we're gonna pick up. We're gonna we're gonna pick up with Chris Paul. And welcome back to the jump sounds of the season. I'm Rachel Nichols. The NBA has been at the forefront of social activism, thanks in large part to the tone set by Commissioner Adam Silver and the head of the NBA Players Association. No, the NBA has been at the forefront of social engineering for the uh, liberal agenda, that being accepting uh, female superiority as well as uh, uh, homosexual normality, right? That's what they're at the forefront of. That's why the NBA has this campaign called Lean In, where they're trying to glorify women. That's why they have this campaign where they're trying to talk up the WNBA. If women were really as equal as they say and as great, as, as, as transcendent over men as they try to act like they are, they wouldn't, need, they wouldn't need men's assistance. They wouldn't constantly be having to beg men to help them be equal. All right? As far as the homosexuality, like I've already said, I'm on record as saying I believe uh, Adam Silver is a is a, a homosexual, allegedly. I believe it. I believe eventually it will come out. Supposedly he's married, but that doesn't mean anything. If you know anything about the Caucasian Jews and their practices, especially via the Talmud, according to their Talmud, it states that it's okay to have sex with a boy as long as he's like eight years old or younger, something along those lines. They um. They circumcise their babies. Their rabbis circumcise their male children by biting off the tip of their penis. Right? Many uh, Caucasian Jew babies, male babies, die every year from catching diseases from uh, rabbis that bite off the tip of their penis. Right? These are things that you can look up. All right? This is what's being promoted. Like I've always stated, uh, behind the liberal so-called black is the liberal so-called white, particularly the liberal Caucasian Jew. All right, you can look it up. But now let's see what Chris Paul, uh, CP3, has to say. Paul, now earlier this season, Chris told me what inspires him to speak out and devotes just so much of his free time to uplifting the community. You're going to want to hear this. Take a listen. Why is it important to you to help to make a difference here? You know, for me, uh, when myself along with the other guys stepped forward at the ESPYs, it was as a man and, and more so as a father and trying to bring awareness to the different issues that we're all facing and just be a voice. I actually posted a picture on my Instagram the night of the ESPYs because as I was sitting there uh, when the ESPY started, uh, we have a photo stream um, with our kids and stuff like that, that me and my wife and our family received pictures. And when this picture came across of my son sitting there watching it, I got goosebumps and uh, I told my wife, I was like, this might be the most meaningful picture that I've probably ever seen and that the things that we're facing now uh, are things that our kids are gonna have to endure. Well, hopefully the most important picture will be the ones that you privately take with your son and not something off of television because that's what's really gonna resonate in the future. But um, I've stated in the past a lot of so-called liberal blacks, the only thing that they like to do is pass on their demons to their children. I've said this ad infinitum. All right. They pass on their fears to their children. All they do is, t is, is uh, take the burden that they were given and they pass it on to their children. They don't give them any solutions. All right. So when they say things like we're going to bring attention to it, what they're really saying is that we're trying to get, you no, know, we're trying to get attention from uh, Caucasians. We want them to give us a hug. We really need you Caucasians to accept the fact that you're not treating us right and we want you to treat us better. This is why I like the, the uh, dynamic between the so-called black race and the so-called white race in America to an abusive relationship between a man and a woman. Now notice, most liberal women today will tell their friend if they're in an abusive relationship to leave the man. But when it comes to the so-called black race and the so-called white race, Proverbially speaking, with the so-called black race playing the female, they're constantly told to stay and try to get the abusive man to, to see the error in his ways and let's work it out. Why is that? Why is that? Because we're in a globalist, Luciferian society where all races have to come together. And beyond that, the liberal black female knows where her bread is buttered. She does not want to be in a society led by the black man. No matter what they say, they do not want that. All right. They like the layout of this society. They get to sleep with whoever they want, do what they want. 
and still play the racialist card. All right, racialist, globalist, feminist. All right. So this the this is the di this is the uh, what's the conundrum that the so-called black man is in right now. You have a lot of people saying things where they don't understand the the uh, the depth of what they're trying to say. They don't understand the overall dynamics of the of the problems that we suffer from in this society. They don't understand that the solution is a, is an internal solution. It's not going to be from external validation. And they're using these athletes as pawns to perpetuate external validation. We just want to bring attention to something. Right? That's like a female. Females always want attention. Children always want attention. Men are not supposed to be trying to look for attention. They're supposed to be trying to look for solutions. Right? What is the solution? Nobody, you never hear any of these guys say, you know what? Let's start our own league. Let's have our own police force. Right? That'll stop the problem right now. The Caucasian Jews have their own police force. Let's let's get our own. Never hear that though. But you know that's okay because that's not going to come to fruition anyway. In order for you to have your own police force, you have to control and understand money, the flow of money, currency, and um, our people don't understand that. Why? Because our people don't have a culture. LeBron James talked about that because he's got two sons and a daughter, and right. he said that knowing his oldest son is going to start driving in a few years. And is going to get in a car and could get pulled over and how young black men are seen in some parts of this country. He said it scares him. How do you feel? How young black men are seen in some parts of the country. What, and what parts are they seen? Are they seen in a positive light? <laughs> Rachel Nichols. Other than when your white husband is filming you getting gang banged by a couple of black men. Allegedly. I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I, I know what it's like to, to be pulled over and to be nervous and not sure what to do and what, and, and what to say or what to do. More fear programming, more fear mongering. Right? Always be scared whenever you see a, a white male, a Caucasian male authority figure. Right. Which is to imply self guilt. I'm guilty just by um, by being born what I am. But supposedly I'm proud to be black. Right, if you get pulled over by a police officer, all you can do is follow their instructions. All right? Why would you be scared? Why would you be fearful? Why would you be nervous other than based off of the programming that you've gotten from television? If something bad is going to happen, it's not going to not happen because you're nervous. So you might as well be a man and deal with whatever comes. If it's your time to go, then it's, all, then it's your time to go. This is what it is. You just go back to the spirit world and wait for your judgment. But um, going through every day fearing uh, every little altercation or traffic stop. No, you can't live your life like that. I'm sorry. Uh, so it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And like, like Ron said, having kids, it really makes an impact. When did it happen to you? Uh, a couple years ago. Really? A couple years ago. So after your face was plastered all over America for years and years, still someone pulled you over and you felt you felt nervous about the interaction? Oh, no question. No question. Because at the end of the day, uh, everyone doesn't know who you are. Right. Yeah, that's true. But I think you're spending too much time on social media, bro. All right. Somebody pull you over. Only thing you could do is show them your license and registration and whatever they ask you to do. Uh, if they're going to take your life... Either you're going to fight to keep your life and take their life, or they're going to take your life. It's, it's pretty simple. All right, fear is not going to help the situation. Nervousness is not going to help the situation. The only thing that you're doing is validating their superiority over you. You have to respect order in the chain of command. But uh, if you see that somebody has a diabolical agenda, either you're going to have to protect yourself and take their life, or they're going to take your life. Either way, fear is not the answer. At the same time, you know, I don't expect any preferential treatment or anything like that. You know, all yes, you do. Stop lying, brother. You expect preferential treatment. No, no, no false humility for the interview. The difference, though, between preferential treatment and being scared of being oh, right, hurt. Right. Those are, those are, there, there's a middle ground there. <laughs> no question. No question. Um, you, you're exactly right. And uh, things happened. It was an uncomfortable situation, but... Um, it happened. We saw Colin. It happened and you're still alive. 
So that should show you that there's no need to be scared. Kaepernick really pushed the national conversation with his protests of the national anthem and get a lot of people talking who weren't. Uh oh, this is the new this is the new black leader right here. Uh, the um the the internet revolutionaries they get heated when you say something about about Kaepernick. Because Kaepernick is going to lead, um, he's going to lead so-called black people to, um, to black land. He's going to lead them to Shangri-La, right? When, when Kaepernick get in power, it's going to be all Afro picks and, um, <laughs> and Cadillacs for everybody. Because Kaepernick is the savior. When you guys sat around and talked as a team about whether you wanted to continue and pick up those anthem protests or whether you wanted to move in a different direction. You know, the conversation is amazing. Um, you guys had no intention of continuing his protest because all you guys are bought and paid for. You're all corporate whores, every last one of you. You with State Farm, LeBron with Nike, uh, Melo is a, is a brand Jordan athlete. Ain't no way in the world Michael Jordan going to uh, co-sign that shit. You know, Carmelo had his moment where he tried to act like Malcolm X. And then they go and they win the gold medal at the Olympics. And Carmelo talking about is crying like a bitch and talking about we're going to make America great again. Like he's so confused. A lot of these guys are so confused. Make America great again. This dude actually said this. And those of you who don't believe me, you can look it up. That's how you know a guy's watching too much television. He's trying to mix being a liberal black with a Donald Trump slogan. That's what he actually said. We're going to make America great again as he's crying. Winning the gold medal. That's what that's what um, one of your black uh, athlete leaders, Carmelo Anthony, said. Dude was just confused as hell. That's why his damn wife left him. But none of these guys was going to follow Kaepernick. They, 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 no, they're bought and paid for. They're, they're corporate whores. All right? and, I say, and I don't say that to be insulting. It just, it, it just is what it is. The different uh, symbolism and things like that, they're amazing. But I'm more so, what can we do? I've charged my team, uh, my family, everyone around me. Uh, to, to figure out different ways that we can actually educate people and try to uh, move in the right direction. And we've seen it. And that's kind of a slam at Kaepernick. He said, look, all that, what he did was cool, but what can we do? Teams themselves, the NBA as a league, really want to partner with the players to be active in doing something. What conversations have you guys had about how you guys together can sort of move communities forward? The thing that we have that a lot of other leagues don't have is that recognizable uh, faces. You know, everyone. Look, the number one thing that they, that you can do is uh, to encourage so-called black people to not go to businesses in black community, so-called black communities that are not owned by so-called black people. Uh, you can encourage the so-called black man to stop always wanting to get a job and to take all the talents that he's been gifted with. Most of you brothers have multiple talents. And cultivate that talent and start your own business, all right, so that you can start having more so-called black uh, entrepreneurs and business owners to understand the money system, understand the circulation of money, understand how, how the tax system works, all right, when you get your own LLC, how you can get all your expenditures back. These are the type of things that the so-called black man needs to be told, not how to get on one knee in front of a fucking flag, all right? A lot of you so-called fake internet revolutionaries that want to act like you, you're, uh, <laughs> like you're ready to go all out and start a race war. You niggas are not going to bust a grape in a fruit fight. All right? Because if you were, you wouldn't be on the internet. And, I, and I'm not against brothers who are, who are militant and actually want to have a so-called militant m revolution. If that's your platform, that's your platform. My thing is be about what you're talking about. All right? Don't talk all that shit on the internet knowing you're not going to do a goddamn thing. All you guys know where the police precincts are. All you guys know where the uh, municipal buildings are, where the government, gov uh, the governor's mansion is, the mayor's mansion is. If you guys really wanted to start a revolution, you would have been did it. You wouldn't be on YouTube talking shit. All right. So in the meantime, the greatest thing that you could do is have something to teach your children, have something to teach your sons and encourage them with actual knowledge and wisdom. Not all this fake anger. And this bullshit, you know, sitting up stewing in your, in your living room, watching TV, talking about the crack of this and the crack of that. Bro, look, um, if you're going to be a king, you got to think like a king. All right? And that's for all you brothers. If you're going to be kings, you got to think like kings. That means you have to manipulate, not be manipulated. But let's continue on here. Let's see what's going on. I mean, they 
if you go to a grocery store, you know them. I think for us, it's, it's figuring out exactly what we need to do in these different communities and moving forward. Thank you. Right. So that was a good little segment. It's going to be interesting to see how those two dynamic personalities combine. Now, Skip and Shannon, they also covered uh, the Chris Paul acquisition. Let's see what they have to say. Chris Paul was traded last week to the Rockets in an eight-player deal. CP3 finished fourth in the NBA in assists per game last season. And his new teammate, James Harden, led the lead. Paul posted a pic on Instagram working out in Rockets gear with the caption, putting that work in. Skip, how will CP3 fit with Harden? I'm not going to, Shannon Sharp, go all the way to disaster here, but I am going to stick by what I just told you. Houston will be a little worse with CP3 than it was last year without CP3. So no third seed? I, I don't think so. Okay. Again, I need to see the end of free agency and see how everything okay. shakes out. But remember, Houston was the surprise of the NBA last year. 55 wins to San Antonio 61 and Golden State 67. And all of a sudden, James Harden is about to become the NBA's unhappiest and most frustrated player. I agree. It wouldn't shock me. Now, if you look in your lower left-hand part of the screen, you're going to see James Harden. Uh, with his left hand, he's pointing up to the sky. With his right hand, he's making the hail, the uh, pan sign for the goat god, so-called Baphomet. All right? So who is he really saluting there? All right? Like I said, James Harden, in my honest view, is a, uh, is a monarch athlete. And like I said, a lot of these guys in the NBA, they worship pan. I said before, Chris Paul. Brotherhood of Pan. That's why he made those State Farm commercials with all these guys cross dressing and all that stuff. That's what. It's, that's why it's called pansexuality to bring together of opposites. All right. That might be why he's on the Rockets. That might be a couple of, of brothers in the Brotherhood of Pan coming together. Who knows? But I don't think that their styles are going to mesh. But you know they have a chance because James Harden can possibly play off the ball. But we'll see. Player, because basically he just got demoted. He just got punished for that game six meltdown against my Spurs, that epic fail of his in which he scored. Remember, you went crazy on him the next day, but he, he scored 10 points against my Spurs. The, the final score is 114 to 75, game six in Houston in for foot to force a game seven back in San Antonio. And that night, James shot two for 11, two for nine from three, and boom, he's demoted. He's punished because basically he just went from being the center of Mike D'Antoni's universe, because he got to control the basketball. He had the second highest usage rate to Russell Westbrook yeah. last year in the league. And he just went to basically another cog in the offense, a wing player, a spot-up shooter, just a cog in the offense. And he's not going to like it. I think he's biting his lip right now because his last game was pretty miserable, so he can't defend himself. But just wait until we get a fourth of the way into the season, or maybe a halfway through the season, and he starts to realize that the new point guard who's going to dribble the ball up the floor and then dribble it some more is named Chris Paul the third. Yeah, but he needs that. I, I think that um I, I also think that Harden's gonna start to bitch and complain. But I think that last season took such a toll on him physically, and then the last part of the playoffs where he imploded for whatever reason. Who knows, maybe some type of, of suggestion, some, some type of mind control suggestion. Or I'm sure, you know, some of the, some, you know, there's a faction who think that he threw the game. That's also possible. As I've stated, I'm not, a, I'm not adverse to the notion that uh, games are rigged and you have certain players that rig games or that are complicit in certain games uh, possibly being rigged. Like I've stated, what I'm, what I'm against is this bullshit that, Oh, well, you know, they brought in number four with four minutes left to cut the lead to four and hit a four-point play and all this bullshit. This, all that shit is, is nonsense, all right? Because if that was the case, all these motherfuckers who claim to know what the scores are going to be and all you silly niggas that follow them, y'all would be rich. Y'all would be like Biff from uh, Back to the Future Part 2. Y'all should all be making money off of what the scores are going to be if y'all already know all that shit is, 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 is down to the damn score, all right? Let's get the hell out of here with that bullshit. But anyway, let's get back to what they're talking about. Wow, I, I was shocked by this because I didn't think James deserved it because he had a great year. You had you pushed him all year for yeah. MVP, am I right? I did. Okay. I did. So you thought he had a really good year, and yet, this is my bottom line takeaway on Chris Paul. And I've said this before, but 
by his nine-time All-Star standards, he's overrated. And he's overrated because I ask you, what has he done? I, I'm starting to wonder if he's going to be remembered after 12 years in the league more for his State Farm commercials than what he does in the playoffs. Well, I'm sure he wouldn't mind that, seeing as, uh, you know, as I've said, that's clearly part of his belief system, in my view. As I've stated, I believe that he's a Luciferian. That's why he's uh, affiliated with the people that he's affiliated with. And it wouldn't shock me if that's one of the things that helped him get to the Rockets. Because by the hand signals that James Harden is doing, James Harden cl clearly worships the same God that he worships. Which is probably why he linked up with Khloe Kardashian. Brother, you're going to find out all this shit is, is, is interrelated. All right? All these people, they're into that Wiccan, uh, Druid, Kabbalah, uh, Baphomet, pansexual, all that shit. You know, that's how these guys rock, man. Orgies, wife swapping, and <laughs> because his playoff record is thirty-three and forty-three, which among active players is the second worst of those active right now. Joe Johnson has a little worse record than than Chris Paul. Does. Iso Joe, yeah, Iso Joe, and he's played on really bad teams. But you don't think of Chris Paul as playing on bad teams, but he's thirty-three and forty-three in the postseason. And he's never gotten to the conference finals. No. You know, I'm not going to slam Chris Paul too much from this perspective. To me, when you start castigating a guy for his playoff performances, well, then you, we have to look at not his playoff record, but how many series did he play in where they lost series that they were supposed to win? Now, you had the one against the Rockets where they were up 3-1 and they blew that series, but he actually missed the game due to injury. They still should have won the series, but that's the only one that I can really think of offhand. They actually beat the uh, Spurs in the 2015 playoffs when they really were not supposed to win that series. So, I mean, I think that he did, they've done pretty well. I think they lost a series to the, to the Grizzlies, but, I mean, they, they weren't better than them that year. And, I mean, it, it is what it is. Not once to the conference finals. Even after having a 3-1 lead. He had a 3-1 lead. And an 8 point Houston. lead in, in, what, game 6 or 7? Yeah, and they, they blew that. They blew that. They had a big lead at home, to right? And then... There was a game against Oklahoma City going back to, uh, three years ago that he melted down late in that game and gave up, had a couple of big turnovers. So my point is, I keep looking saying, I don't see enough, and I've called him before, CP0, as in zero rings, because I, I finally back off and I say, well, wait a second. He's, he's often hurt. He's often nicked up. There's often something wrong with him. Either playoffs or the regular okay. season. Either way, he's only six feet tall, so he's... I'm not, he's not a liability in defense because he can steal a ball from anybody, yeah. but he's still only six feet tall, so he can't dominate on either end of the floor, right? right? Yeah. He can't be transcendent at six feet tall because he's just six feet tall. Well, he has had some transcendent moments. Now, Skip did bring up a moment that I forgot. He did come up small against OKC a couple of years ago, but I mean, Russell Westbrook is such a transcendent athlete. I mean, I, I get on him for his IQ, but it's just so overpowering. You know, like you have to have... You have to have a huge edge in skills over a Russell Westbrook to dominate him. And really, there's nobody who's going to have that type of an edge skill-wise over, over a Westbrook to dominate him that much. Tall. Right. And he's not an Iverson-esque kind of a scorer. Right. Score. Yeah, right. okay. So you're, you're kind of limited. He's not a difference maker. He's not transcendent. He's not a life changer. He, his aura, his mystique, because he's been the head of the Players Association, is greater than his accomplishments in the postseason. So now you picked that guy after 12 NBA seasons, and you've said, we won 55 games last year with James Harden running our show as the center of our universe, our seven seconds or less attack of Mike D'Antoni, and we're going to replace that guy with this guy. And James is not going to like it. James is a lot younger than Chris is. So... Well, supposedly James is the one who got involved with, with uh, getting on the phone and, and talking to him. I think that D'Antoni realizes, look, James Harden gets a lot of assists, but he also gets a lot of turnovers. We need a guy who makes better decisions with the basketball, who's going to um, be able to spell James down the stretch so that maybe James can come through more in the fourth quarter, especially since he's a fat ass who doesn't get in shape to play both ends of the damn court. So I, I'm going to say they're going to be there's going to be frustrations. And by the way, Chris is always mad at somebody. <laughs> I agree with that. That's an angry little dude, man. God damn. That nigga always mad at somebody, man. That's why I say he's like little Kobe. He's always got a chip on his shoulder. And ESPN reported. Well, you small, short, short people enjoy the same way. 
Everybody always trying to pick up short people. Always got a crush on short people. That's small right. people, people that small in stature. He has no chip on they his shoulder. They feel like people put you in your place. People, they always feel like somebody trying to pick on them or take advantage of them. Maybe, this. maybe Chris needs I that. I mean, they try to pick on see, you. Man. See that the chips you don't talk about skin. Okay, but, but again, ESPN reported that. Chris was upset with Doc because he played his son too much. Well, really? Was that why the Clippers lost? I don't think that's why the Clippers failed. But No. Uh, Chris was mad at Doc because it was just time to go. It's like any other relationship. When, when somebody always trying to pick an argument, it's because they, you know, they want to see if there are greener pastures somewhere else. And that's all it was with Chris. Chris just wanted to go somewhere else. He was done with that situation. Uh, he likes L.A. I'm sure his wife likes L.A., but he knew he wasn't going to win there. The best situation for him to go to was the Rockets or San Antonio. No state tax. Houston has a huge Asian population. Chris is very big in Asia. He's a Nike athlete. Uh, you know, he's able to go over there and, and build his global brand. It just makes too much sense from a corporate perspective. But I do, I do think that's an indictment because Chris Paul was, here's the thing, Skip, you mentioned it. Here's a guy that's always hurt, be it regular season or playoffs. He could have signed a max deal. He could have signed a Steph Curry deal. Five years, $201 million. Good to go back. Mm -hmm. He bets on himself on a one-year deal to go play with a player that's the exact same player. They're both ball dominant. Mm -hmm. One was uh, first, second, and holding the ball. Yep. The other was seventh. They're first and fourth in pick and roll screens. So using the ball and a screener, James Harden was one, Chris Paul was four. He's willing to bet that, that to stay in L.A. So there is some truth. Now, we heard Glenn Davis right here and said, yeah. the son walks around like he a monster. Uh -huh. Now, Doc Rivers said that's not true. And by the way, we've had the son sitting in that same Who seat. Who said that? Bull job, right. as you said. So, uh, Doc Rivers' son does act like he's better than he really is. He talks a lot of shit for a guy who really, you know... <laughs> He really should be in the in the uh, development league if it wasn't for his dad. All right, but uh, I think Chris was tired of the whole scene. He he need, he needed to get the hell up out of there. Plus, please keep in mind he's only signing a one year deal. On the back burner could be that uh, it could be that that uh, that reunion with the Banana Boat crew coming on deck for for the season after next. Don't be shocked. So so, yeah. but, so there's some truth, Skip. Mm -hmm. My thing is is that. They're really the same players. James Harden is ball dominant. Now, we can say, well, he was a sixth man, but he wasn't this James Harden in OKC. No. Nope. What we see now. He's always been a uh, two guard masquerading as point. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Mike D'Antoni, and I was looking at some footage, if you look at what uh, Steve Nash, when he won those MVPs, it was all about Stoudemire uh, filling the lane on the party. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a whole lot of threes going up skip. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, Lou Williams, you trade him. You're trying to dump Ryan Anderson three point, uh, 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 $30 million, what, well, $60 million contract. 60 over three over, years. Over the next three years. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of Ooh. cake. So who's going to be shooting those threes, Skip? That made you so prolific because Dara Maury said there's more value in the three than there is the two. Mm -hmm. We put up, the Mac Tony said, we want to put up 50 a game. Mm -hmm. Well, you lose Lou Williams. You're trying to get rid of and Beverly. You're trying to get rid of Anderson. Yep. So who's going to shoot those? Trevor Reason? What? what? Yeah, they still have Trevor Reason, Eric Gordon. They have enough firepower from the outside. But Shannon, I, I definitely get Shannon's point. Uh, Steve Nash was, uh, you know, that Stoudemire Steve Nash combination was, was official. But um, I, don't, I don't think that they're going to need a Stoudemire type player in, in Houston. I think that they have more than enough outside shooting. What type of what type of game are you going to actually play? But Skip, it's hard for me to believe that James Harden wouldn't sign up on this. James Harden had to sign up on this, Skip, because they're still trying to get him to sign another max contract extension. And uh, it's funny that Shannon brings that up. James Harden recently signed a two hundred twenty-eight million dollar contract extension. So over the next, I believe it's uh, the five years. So he's going to he's going to be the highest paid player in NBA history. What four years, one hundred and sixty million dollars? He won out over James Harden. I mean James Harden over Dwight Howard. So as a superstar player, Skip, you know they carry more cachet in that sport. Basketball superstar players carry more cachet than the quarterback superstar quarterbacks in the NFL, yeah. or more cachet than a dominant baseball player or a pitcher. So when you have that kind of cachet 
It's hard for me to believe, Skip, that they didn't run this by what do you what Of course, not only did they run it by him, he's the one who recruited Chris, allegedly. Like I said, um, I think James Harden is getting old enough to understand that everything is not can't just be about him. I think that he's had his chance to uh, light up the stat sheet, and now he's ready to acquiesce a lot of those responsibilities. He's not in condition to, to uh, play well in the fourth quarter like he needs to be. So it's easier to bring in a guy like Chris Paul rather than try to get into the immaculate level of conditioning that he would need to to dominate in the fourth. And the NBA game right now is so much run and gun. Like, he, he needs to be able to have another player that can spell him. And then, like I said, there's the um, the Brotherhood of Pan angle. There's a reason why, once again, in the promo for this segment, they have James Harden pointing up to the sky and uh, with his left hand and with his right hand doing the, the Manu Cornuto, the horn sign with his right hand. A lot of these, uh, these networks, their executives and the people who design the graphics for these shows, they're in the know. They know what's going on behind the scenes in the entertainment industry, which the sports world is a part of. All right. They worship Penn, believe it or not. What do you think about CP3? Okay, are you saying then that James Harden asked for them to go get CP3 to take pressure off James? Like he just didn't want the weight of the world on, all on his shoulders? I don't know if he asked. I don't know if he said, guys, why don't y'all get CP3? But I think when, the, when it was broached that CP3 was clearly interested in leaving the Clippers... And Houston Rockets was one of the uh, point of the destinations. Um, that James, uh, we think about getting uh, Chris Paul. What do you think about that? I'm sure he gave. But if you notice, he could have had his choice. He could have demanded to trade it anywhere, and I believe they would have traded him anywhere. He can go to that East. Now you talk about Chris Paul might be known more for uh, 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 the State Farm commercials. He's better known as being the best friend to one. Guy that was born to Gloria James on 12 oh, 30, go, yeah. That guy? <laughs> That's what he's best. Yeah. He's best. No, skip. Yeah. What, think about it. I want you to put this in. I want you to just let that legend sleep in. Mm. Everybody's going to the West. The West is that. Mm. Kevin Durant's going to sign. He said, I'm going to sign somewhere around in mid July. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get some guys in place, and then I'll take the rest of the money. So they're all through. doing LeBron a favor by they staying away? They don't want to sleep. Skip. They got a meat suit. Three piece. A pack of lions, or you can go play at the Eastern Conference and see one king. They said, "Go, go and give me the lions." They ain't making in a week. I know, but there's well, the reason why a lot of these guys, these guys are going to the Western Conference. Shannon is so funny. The reason why they're going to the Western Conference is because they know that they're not going to be able to get a lot of these stars to come to the East. So they say, "You know, I'll just go out west," and um, they're looking at it long term. They're saying, "Well, it's a good possibility that we'll only have to deal with Golden State for two years." Because after two years, Draymond and Clay's contracts are up. Unless they decide to take low, they're going to leave. So Golden State may be vulnerable. Out in the East, you got LeBron James uh, hyped up on the on uh, the most advanced steroids and performance enhancing drugs in the world, allegedly, along with Kyrie. So it's like you know what, and we can't get anybody to come over to our teams in Atlanta or in um, or in Indiana or wherever, Boston, Detroit, what have you. So they say, you know what, we'll just, I'll just go out to the, to the West. And, you know, they, they try to make it this big thing like everybody's running out West. Jimmy Butler and Paul George got traded to the West. They didn't, they didn't go there willingly. Both those guys were trying to stay in the East. There's only one star left in the whole East. It's LeBron James. Kyrie's there. But so, so they're paired up. And nobody else has a star that anybody wants to go pair with. Exactly. That's why. That's the point, Skip. That's why guys are going West because nobody even has a star in the East that you would want to go pair with. Now Kyrie's a star. John Wall is still a star as well. But the East is, um, they're depleted. The NBA is going to have to think about, you know, I was against it at first, but they're going to have to think about making the playoffs the uh, top 16 records as opposed to the uh, top eight in each conference. Who, who do you want to go play with? Paul could have gone anywhere. Well, okay, choose one in the East. Where do you want to go where you can beat LeBron? Paul Millsap could have gone anywhere. Yeah. They could have traded. They could have traded uh, 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 Jimmy Butler in the East. They could have traded uh, uh, Paul George. They don't want that scale. Mm. It's the, like the man. You, you see the movie Shocker. Well, anyway, he had electricity and, and more current. The more electricity went through his body, the stronger he got. Man, they don't want like Bruce Lee when he started glowing. <laughs> yeah, when he started, he started. Uh, and they said we give him Paul. I think he's thinking of Show Enough. I don't think he's thinking of Bruce Leroy. 
Paul George. We give him Jimmy Butler. And skip, let this sink in. Mm-hmm. A team won the NBA Finals in five games with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond, Iggy comes back, Sean Livingston comes back, and everybody is still flocking to the West mm. because they don't want to see that man in Cleveland. Mm. No, it's because they know that he's the only one who, who can build a, a, a super team out there in the Eastern Conference. Nobody else is able to build one. All right? Boston was trying to build a super team, but Indiana didn't want to trade Paul George to somebody in their conference. Same thing with Chicago. Hmm. Tell me why. Well, there's nowhere to flock to in the East. Where would you flock? Build you a team. Huh? Build you a team. I mean, Washington. They might lose Otto Porter Jr. to Sacramento. So now and what's he's left? He's going to go to the West. Okay. But, but he, and he's taking more business. He, he's just going to take max money. He don't, because who's in the East? Like? Well, who's Otto Porter going to beat? Cause you, Nobody. Because you know what they say, LeBron, boy? They say, LeBron, you like Monday. You look better going than coming. Mm-hmm. When you were leaving, but now you back in the East and you were Cleveland and you look linked up with Hawk. Mm-hmm. Skip, okay. what, tell me why. I, you, you got to tell me before we go to break. And I know he lives in my ear saying we got to we rest. Yeah, yeah. Tell me why everybody leaving the East. Skip. Leaving the East was... Shannon Sharp, he got to be the most country sports analyst in history. <laughs> tell me why everybody leaving the East, Skip. Goddamn. So some of them get sent away. I, I know birds. They say birds fly south for the winter. Yeah. Why they going to the west for the summer? Uh, I knew Shannon was going to make some country analogy. <laughs> they hopping west faster than a tick off of a donkey's ass, Skip. I only care about the Western Conference, the real conference, and I'm here to tell you that Oklahoma City just got better than Houston. You got that That's all I got Skip in the summer. You got the Hampton. Yeah. You got uh, 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 Nantucket. You got Kenny Bunkport. You got Hyenas. Skip, you got all these great places in the East. It's Hyenas. Brother, hyenas, not hyenas. Hyenas is what you see on National Geographic. East and everybody coming west. <laughs> Why you won't do that? Too. Go see Braun. Oh, was I it think wrong in the west. for 49ers GM John Lynch to sit? <laughs> but yeah, anyway, uh, that was uh, a little NBA hot stove. We'll see how they fit together. I don't know how well they're going to fit together. We'll see. But uh, James Harden's definitely somebody to watch. In regard to his future, I believe that he was, I don't, I don't know if he's fully a monarch athlete, but like I said, he fell into the the witchcraft coven of the Kardashians, Osculum and Fame. So it's going to be interesting to see where his career and his life goes from here. Chris Paul, like I've already stated, I believe he's another one in the Brotherhood of Pan. So it's a couple of, of uh, adher- or adherents to the philosophy of the worship of the Baphomet coming together. We'll see how they, you know, how they link up. You know, remember, in those Luciferian beliefs, it's, it's, you know, it's always a master and an apprentice. A lot of it is, is uh, greed-based. So a lot of times these guys, they cannibalize each other because they're not taught how to, how to fit in with each other. They're taught that everything, all the glory has to go to, um, to just one. But anyway, peace.